I'm Tom Jahonen. Um, I've written a couple of books on mobile, and it's very much my honor and pleasure to join you today. Um, I am speaking from Medina in Saudi Arabia. I'm, I'm not a Muslim. I am here for the first time doing an MBA course here, a short course, and teaching their telecoms uh, session. So, um, but it's quite a religious week for me um, being here. Uh, the, the course was, was uh, 300 feet from where their, their prophet has been buried. And now I get to join you guys and talk about mobile in ministry. I have been asked to talk about reaching congregations in the emerging world. So um, I've been uh, thinking about it. In particular, I was thinking, uh, and with a focus on Africa. So I was thinking, how could I best help you as an audience? And I know that Africa is very difficult to get numbers and statistics. So I'm very much focused on the, the 15 minutes to just look at Try to find some numbers that, that can be of use and practical, help you develop your tools uh, for your use. So, um, I, uh, so we know the numbers. Uh, you've been looking at them. At the end of this year, the planet reaches uh, the mobile moment. We have uh, more mobile phones in use or mobile subscriptions in use than total population on the planet. Compared to any other technology, there has never been a moment like this. There are more mobile phones than radios, than televisions, than computers, than internet, landline phones, more mobile phones than automobiles, more mobile phones than credit cards, more mobile phones than bank accounts, more mobile phones than, than playstations, um, you name it, more mobile phones than wristwatches, even more mobile phones than people need a pen and pe paper. There are 800 million people who are illiterate on the planet, but even they have use for a mobile phone. So. Uh, if we look at uh, the numbers, we rarely get a split across the, the different continents, but Ericsson looked at the numbers a year ago, and if you look at the third bullet point on the slide, you see that Ericsson, of the, the different areas that Ericsson uh, categorized, Africa was last. Africa rather strongly on par with India, slightly lagging India, but if you look at the India market, you have a good proxy for what Africa looks like. Obviously, Africa looks nothing like the United States or the industrialized world when it comes to mobile phones. In my almanac, I have been uh, giving the, the split between the Western world and the emerging world. So if you look at the column on the left, you see that uh, we in America, for example, or, or I live in Hong Kong, uh, all of our phones are camera phones. Uh, three quarters of them are 3G phones. At the end of last year, 40% of them were smartphones. It's now 60%. And almost none of the phones are secondhand. All of our phones are new. Now, when you look at the right-hand side of, of the, the column, you see that in the emerging world overall, and this is not Africa, I mean the whole emerging world, anything from Brazil to Russia to China, only three quarters of the phones are camera phones. One quarter of the phones are so simple, they don't even have a camera. Only one in five phones has a high-speed data uh, connection and plan. 20% were 3G phones. Only 15% at the end of last year, 25% now, are smartphones. And one in six mobile phones in use in the emerging world is a second-hand phone, a used phone. So this, if you think in, in America that, that you go to any city and, and on the, the freeways leading to the city, you have all the big uh, malls selling used cars. Nobody sells used phones in, in America. But if you go to, to Rio de Janeiro, or you go to Lagos, Nigeria, or you go to Jakarta in India, uh, Mumbai in, in India, lots of markets, lots of stores sell second-hand mobile phones. Used mobile phones are totally common, and they are predominantly Nokia mobile phones. So, um, Nielsen gave a, a split of smartphone penetration rates uh, migration rates across several several countries, unfortunately not African countries, um, but um, here's a split across some countries. When we look at the United States first, most familiar to us, we of course know that, uh, the, so the numbers are now from September 2013, so they're very current. Uh, Nielsen calculated that in America, six out of ten Americans has a smartphone. Four out of ten Americans does not have a smartphone. I would guess that your conference has been talking very much about apps, about smartphones. When they've been talking about internet surfing, it has been only internet use on smartphones. And you've been talking about tablets. 
um, which are obviously not even smartphones, but are even more advanced and, and uh, expensive devices. Um, I have a problem with this, even in America. I mean, I, I recognize that, that this is what, what people talk about. It's the shiny object and everyone likes to talk about smartphone apps. But come on, if you are talking about the congregation in your pews, you can't start off with applications and smartphones. The applications are fine if you are providing tools for your staff, for your ministers, for your pastors. But come on, you can't provide a technology which spits in the face of 40% of your audience. A smartphone application would be spectacularly unchristian thing to do in America, where most of the phones are smartphones, but 40% are still dumb phones. Recognize that those people who cannot afford an iPhone are the poorest of your congregation. They are the people who cannot get there. So isn't this what the Bible teaches us? That the way you treat the least fortunate ones amongst us, that is how you treat God. So there's nothing wrong in developing smartphone apps as long as you cover your total congregation first. And that's where we can get good guidance there from America, from Kraft Foods. Kraft Foods mobile strategy starts with a very clever phrase, leave no phone behind. That's why Kraft starts with SMS, with MMS, and with the mobile internet. That is how you reach every pocket in America. But now if we come and look at the rest of the world, remember we had a proxy for Africa, which is statistics from India. So here in the Nielsen studies, we have the information from uh, the Philippines and from India their smartphone migration now, September 2013, is only 18% for uh, India, 1, 8, 18, and 15% for the Philippines. That means that more than four out of five phones in use are basic phones. It would be ludicrous to offer any app-based solution for religion in Africa. Ludicrous, useless, pointless for at least the next three or four years. Completely pointless and not even to talk about tablets. It's a different thing if you provide it for the pastor. It's a different thing if you provide the tablet within the church. But if you want to reach your audience, you cannot even start with smartphones. So where do you go? Interesting numbers from Uganda. African country of Uganda, there are more mobile phones than light bulbs. Think about your home. How many light fixtures do you have in your bedroom? And how many more in your living room? And how many more in your dining room? And your bathroom? And your kitchen? And your garage? In Africa, it is totally normal for the house to have no electricity. If the house has electricity, a small shack, it might be a one-room house with one light bulb. That's the reality we are looking at when we're looking at Africa. So, Vodafone measured that globally there are 600 million people who have a mobile phone who do not have electricity at home, who live beyond the reach of the electrical grid. They have to send their mobile phone to another village to be charged, or send the battery with their child to school so that it can be charged, or they have a diesel power or pedaled or solar power uh, based uh, charger to recharge the mobile phones. On this, I have an idea for you, for your churches. In your churches, include so, uh, recharging power so that you can power the, the uh, mobile phones of your congregation. It's a good, reason, good excuse for your, your congregation to come to the churches early so that they have good time to, to fully charge their pho phones and to stay all the way till the end. Make sure you have a lot of Nokia-based uh, chargers with all the three different type of plugs because Nokia has used three different type of plugs and uh, um, also make sure that these chargers are not easy to steal. So, so lock them up a little bit and fix the, the system so that they only have the wires to connect to and they can't take the actual charger with them. Sometimes in Africa, people are quite opportunistic when they find technology. Um, another idea, you can provide your ministers with portable battery-powered pocket rechargers for mobile phones. There are little uh, batteries that they can carry in their pocket and then charge, so if they meet an individual member of the, the congregation somewhere in their house or something like that, then they can bring the charger with them and say, oh, but while we are talking, I can also help charge your, your phone. I was thinking about it, it's their R&R, &R, their redemption and recharging. 
Um, in Africa, we have the statistics from Gallup. Unfortunately, these are three years old, but the principle is, is right, that uh, more men have mobile phones than women. People living in cities have a higher penetration of mobile phones than rural, rural people. And it is the age bracket of 19 to 29 year olds who have the highest penetration of mobile phones. As we move further from that, the population of mobile phones is less and less. How do we then reach the audience if it's not a smartphone app? Obviously, it starts with SMS. We have now reached the point on the planet that 6 billion active users use SMS globally. That is 85% of the total mobile phone subscriber base. If you have anything interactive digital that you want to deliver for your audiences, then that is, of course, SMS. Every single country, literate people use SMS. The only reason you wouldn't use SMS is if you are illiterate. So we also have to provide voice services. Let me show you a couple of examples. Hershey's offers farmers farming advice for free by SMS in, in countries in Africa that uh, uh, farm cocoa leaves. They've increased yields from 15 to 40 percent. Uh, Pew gave a, a study of the use of SMS. You, you will all have these slides. You can look at them later. You notice in every single country that Pew measured, SMS use is, high, use is higher than the Internet. I took from that uh, uh, published uh, news um, the, in, the emerging world countries that were listed. So I, I removed the Western world countries. I left the United States so you can compare, but you see that in very many countries like Indonesia, Kenya, Lebanon, Mexico, China, the use of SMS is significantly higher, text messaging, significantly higher than that in America. Only the countries on the bottom, you look at India, Pakistan, SMS use is a little bit lower than the level in the United States. This is because they have a high incident of illiteracy. Also, when you compare the two uh, columns side by side, you notice SMS use is always far higher than the use of the Internet on a mobile phone. The part that I added, which uh, Pew did not study, but I added out of my own analysis, the part in parentheses, that's from Tommy Ahnen Consulting just for you today, I indicated what is the predominant form of the mobile Internet they use. In America, it is obviously HTML. In America, if you find any uh, software developer who develops the mobile internet, they don't even want to remember what WAP, WAP, stood for. They absolutely don't want to do any coding with WAP for America anymore. But when you look at the majority of mobile internet use in Indonesia, in Kenya, in Mexico, in the Ukraine, in Egypt, in India, in Pakistan, it's always WAP. WAP. So when we're looking at our tools, when we talk about the internet on mobile phones in Africa, it is not smartphone internet. It is not even HTML internet on a feature phone. It is WAP, predominantly WAP. Sorry, we have to go that much back in time, but this is a technology we have to use. So um, what can we do with this? We have uh, health services we can do via SMS, uh, Mali, Uganda, Tanzania, etc. In South Africa, OMO detergent uses monthly reminders by SMS to repurchase the detergent. Their repurchase rate is up by 60%. Obviously, for religious uses, you can send reminders to your congregations. Remember to come to church on Sunday. This is our topic today, etc. It will definitely work. Um, we have uh, mobile education services. Pricewaters Cooper House uh, did a couple of examples from the emerging world, China, Indonesia, Bangladesh, and Nigeria found that when we offer education services on SMS and on audio, we will save costs to the students, we will increase their academic performance, and we have a reduction in dropout rates. Again, the power of mobile. Back to uh, WAP. This is from Indonesia. If you remember, Indonesia is a little bit ahead of India and Africa in terms of their smartphone migration rate, yet 75% of mobile phones in Indonesia are WAP, capable. They are not smartphones, they don't do HTML, but they do WAP. Four out of five people in India, it will be five out of six in, in Africa, are WAP capable. You have to do WAP if you want to do the mobile internet, not HTML. The Nigerian constitution, for example, was delivered as a smartphone app for Android, Symbian, and Blackberry only. Obviously, no iPhone, no Windows, those aren't used there. or And uh, it includes uh, mobile web on WAP. 
had 330,000 downloads in a matter of three months. Uh, the Nigerian, the new Nigerian constitution. So the power is, is, is right there and we can do a lot. So I want to end with this. Your toolkit to reach the audiences, to reach your, your congregations in Africa has seven elements. Voice services, because voice services even reach people who are illiterate, and SMS text messages, and MMS, and WAP. The first four will reach every pocket. You also have three other technologies you have to prepare for. USSD, I know, none of you know what it is, but trust me, you need USSD. Java, if you're going to do an app, the only way you can do an app in Africa is Java, I know, but we're old technology. And HTML in the richest parts of Africa, this would be South Africa, Kenya, uh, uh, Morocco, a couple of places like that. You can already start to use HTML. No smartphone apps, not even BlackBerry, which is the most used uh, smartphone on, on Africa, or Android or Symbian. Of course not uh, Windows or iPhone. Definitely no tablets, no QR codes, no augmented reality, no Wi-Fi, no 3G. Uh, please follow me on Twitter. We can discuss this more. I hope you have a great conference, and thank you for having me uh, join you. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you. Tommy, are you able to hear us? I can hear you. Okay, great. Do you have time to answer a few questions? Yes, I would love some. Can you still see me? Yes, we yes, can. Yes, we can. Okay, okay. Yes. We've got, we've a, got a kind of a one-way audio happening because of our remote participants. So we're going to have to be very intentional uh, in, in passing the mic back and forth between here and Tommy. But if you have a question, uh, queue up and we'll see if we can fit as many of you in as possible. So raise your hands if you guys have a question for Tommy. Am I, am I on? Here we go. Okay. Um, the, the question was um, re regarding USSD. Uh, I've played with this technology uh, a bit in, in using that as a two-way uh, communication to uh, feature phones. Uh, is it your understanding um, that the penetration of USSD follows the same penetration of SMS capability? That is my, my understanding, but I wanted to see if that was uh, your case as well. Yes, the, the main issue with USSD that it is either on or it is off. Uh, so within the countries, within the markets where it is used, most of Africa uses USSD. But as we come to uh, Asia, for example, it will be less than half of the countries. And then Latin America, it's very spotty. Uh, Europe, North America, almost none. So, so um, that usually a country will either have it on and it is a signaling channel they use frequently uh, or it is not used at all. Where it is used, it is very commonly used, so for the rest of the people who don't know, it is a simple, easy way to query your customers. You can do very nice little ask questions, little quizzes, uh, uh, ask a little opinion surveys, things like that. It is very useful for that kind of uses. I think you've uh, started answering my question. Um, I've heard you before on a, on a TED talk, I think, present uh, USSD as one of the, the next uh, revolutions in mobile. But we're not seeing it happen. Can you maybe expound on it a little bit more and where we would possibly engage as uh, Christian organizations? Yes, in this case, it depends on the, the country you are going. But if you are in Africa, it is essentially every country. When you talk to the local uh, technology providers there, typically you would talk to the operator and you would set this up. Then it's a standard tool, just like you would set up something on SMS or something you would set up on MMS, etc. It will never come to America. It's not America has moved far, far beyond or, or Western Europe. Uh, the much more powerful capability that we don't need this anymore. What do you think is the timeline to the inflection point where HTML and you know technologies that are being used in in, in Europe and America, um, you know, when's the what's the timeline that we should be looking at uh, in to for for apps and so forth? You have a very good model to look at Latin America. 
Latin America will lead Africa by approximately two years. So when you see that this becomes very powerful and viable in Latin America, about two years later you can take it to Africa. So um, Latin America is now at about 30% smartphone penetration. Um, their uh, internet use, HTML, will work on 50% of their phones. Uh, so HTML is starting to be viable for Latin America, smartphones very soon, selected markets, uh, Colombia, Argentina, Chile, uh, you can already do smartphones today. Uh, they're that advanced, Brazil not yet. Uh, so so um, uh, incidentally, Venezuela, you can do Blackberry. <laughs> but, but, uh, but anyway, um, Latin America is a good proxy for you. Two years after Latin America, you can do the same in Africa. Hi, Tommy. Thank you for your presentation. One uh, method we're looking at using is Bluetooth to transmit small uh, MP3 and 3GP files. And I wonder if you have any statistics on the prevalence of Bluetooth in phones, any numbers, and whether or not, if you could comment, if that's a viable strategy to use in those locations. Uh, very good. Thank you. Ex excellent question. Um, if we think, uh, let me sidetrack a little bit with the answer. If you think about your staff, you send your, your missionaries, you have your priests and your staff working in, in the, the uh, emerging world, you should supply all of them with very advanced, very powerful Android-based smartphones. Make sure that they have micro uh, SD card slots and obviously Bluetooth. Make sure that you provide all possible digital content you possibly can onto them and that the phone has a replaceable battery and your uh, priest can carry two or three of the, the spare batteries with him if suddenly, uh, you know, God and faith, fate take him to, to uh, you know, mountain region where he has no cellular coverage and no, no electricity for a couple of months, a couple of days, he can just swap his batteries in and, and keep, keep uh, the power up. Bluetooth is available on more than 50% of all the phones on the planet. I would say Africa penetration Bluetooth is roughly 50%. Micro SD cards or other memory card slots are available on more than 70% of all phones on the planet. So it is even more highly able. So when you are transmitting, you want to offer a, a you know a simple you know prayer book or something like that in ebook format or something like that. You can do that very well with Bluetooth and with uh, micro SD card transfer. We have a participant from uh, um, Zakir from Bangladesh has a comment and a question. He says, I'm very much hopeful about mobile ministry. How would you suggest I engage with technology revolution in your experience there? there. Experiment. Learn and experiment. I like to tell the story for, for, for the, the developer community about Rovio, the Finnish company that developed Angry Birds. We all know Angry Birds. Angry Birds has already had two billion downloads. It's the most played video game on the planet. Angry Birds was not their first game. It was, was not their third game or their fifth game or their tenth game. Rovio, the company that developed Angry Birds, had 51 failed games until they came up with Angry Birds. It was their 52nd game until it was finally mastered. They figured out everything what to do, and they finally, finally had a success. So don't be afraid to experiment and to try. So, so this, is, this is an industry which is very, very rich uh, opportunity. The nice thing is mobile is an interactive media. You can always talk to your congregation. You can always talk to your uh, uh, partners and friends and ask for their opinion through mobile, and they will respond through mobile. Uh, hi, Tommy. I have a question about uh, the language landscape on phones, especially in the realm of the Java phones. Um, what does it look like to create a Java app and have it work on phones in various regions of the world uh, as far as uh, the text of the language support goes? Uh, sorry, I love the question. I'm not enough of an expert to answer that. Sorry, I, I don't know. Um, I w in general, my advice for Java would simply be beware that it is a very fr uh, fragmented development community, development uh, uh, um, platform. So you want to try to figure out the minimum programming set 
to create very basic services that work on Java of every variation. Uh, J2ME, uh, Java 2 Evolution is, is somewhat trying to address those issues, but it's, it's uh, really a fragmented and nasty place. Definitely language support will be uh, uh, fragmented and, and problematic. So, so um, try your best, good luck, but ask the local experts, they will know the best. Uh, hey, Tommy, Antoine here. Long time, no talk, um, for a few minutes anyway. Um, you and I have known each other for a good long time. Um, and in our offline conversations, we've often talked about the need for those persons who have a strong faith base, whichever um, faith that they come from, to, to carry that as strongly as they carry the technology um, with mobile going forward. Um, what would you say, um, given what you've seen from your end, what would be some of the challenges that faith-based organizations are going to run into as uh, mobile penetration rates and installed base rates start to plateau in some areas or um, exponentially grow in others? Um, I think we will see even more pronounced effect of technology disruption and a false god uh, coming out of the virtual world, enabled by technology overall, but in particular, those markets where they do not have a long history on the internet, on video gaming, on television, on radio, when they see the power what becomes into their pocket through various uh, virtual entertainment uh, and, and services, it is a big um, um, rival to religion. Uh, where people might just be, we know there are already people who are fully addicted to video games, for example, and, and do really nothing else, and, and so forth. But I think that we, you as an audience, we should be even more aware that while there's a level of danger in the industrialized world where young people might be exposed to many different platforms and opportunities of, you know, video games and DVDs and, and uh, virtual worlds and so forth, it is even more pronounced if you never were hooked on television as a kind of a mild drug and you were never playing video games on the desktop before, but suddenly all this digital opportunity arises on your mobile phone. I think that we will have an even bigger issue of dealing with the emerging world needs. How can we keep our message relevant in the context where suddenly that digital opportunity inside the pocket, all kind of virtual experiences can become even more um, exciting for that, that uh, user who was never exposed before. I think that it, we, we need to work even harder in those markets, uh, incidentally using that same platform. I think we, we might have time to squeeze one more question in. Do we have one more? Okay, well, that might have been a great, a great question for us to end on. Tommy, thank you so much on behalf of everyone here. We really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest. Thank you. Thank you.